This video is going to focus on the different ways that we can take water and turn it into drinking water and the importance of having pure water when doing chemical analysis. The first section that we're going to focus on then is how we can take salt water from the sea and purify it. This lesson introduces a new key word then which is the word potable. Key definition there, potable means safe to drink. Okay, so if we were to have a look at the Earth's surface, it's quite clear to see that the majority of it is water. 72% in fact. One of the things that's important to know, which you may have realised if you're ever into the beach, is that 97% of that water is salt water. So how do we take that salt water and turn it into drinkable water? The key word you're looking for is desalination. So desalination then is a simple form of distillation and the first step is to put your salt water into the apparatus as you can see here and then heat it up. As you heat the salt water the H2O the water will start to evaporate leaving the salt behind. And then finally you need to have something to collect the water so it can start to condense back down and then when you collect it that will be pure water which is safe to drink. The major problem with this technique, however, is that lots of energy is needed for the process to be carried out. So what you need to do is either do it in an area where there's an abundant supply of energy or you need to find a different technique. The second part of this video is to have a look at chemical analysis and why chemists need to have pure water to be able to carry out analysis on different chemical compounds. One of the key things that chemists do then is using sensitive machines and chemical reactions to identify or measure the different substances in the world. So why do we need to use pure water in this analysis? The key thing to note then is that the water used for chemical analysis should not contain any dissolved salts. If it did that, one of the major problems is it could give you incorrect results. So for example, tap water contains small amounts of dissolved salts which may react to form precipitates which could completely throw off what a scientist thinks is in a chemical. So they may actually hide the correct results of the analysis. Also the machines used for analysis may detect the salts, again leading to that incorrect conclusion. Okay, the final section of this video then is going to focus on how we can get drinking water from underground lakes and streams. There are three key words that you need to know then to help you with this section. First one is aquifer, which is an underground rock containing the water, groundwater. The second one is sedimentation, which is little bits of rock, little pieces that are settling on the bottom of a river or somewhere else. And then finally chlorination, which is the use of chlorine to kill microorganisms. There are three major sections then to treating fresh water. The first of which is to take your water from your aquifer and put it into a sedimentation tank. In here all the little bits and pieces will sediment which means they'll settle on the bottom of the tank. The rest of the water goes into the filtration tower. In here we have sand and gravel and as normal filtration works it helps to get rid of all the bits inside the water. The next step is for all that to go into the chlorination tank. In here chlorine is added to kill the bad microorganisms and bacteria that you don't want. This will then go into a storage tower where it will be kept safe until it's ready to be pumped into people's homes. The main benefits of this method then is it removes any leaves and twigs that are built up in the stream or in the aquifer. Any small objects like silt get taken out. On top of that your soluble substances also get removed. That could be things like pesticides and fertilizers. And then obviously the chlorination stage helps to kill any bacteria that you don't want in there. Okay let's have a look at a couple of questions then. So the first one here says describe what desalination is and how seawater can be made potable using simple distillation. That's worth three marks. Question two is explain why distilled water is used in chemical analysis. And question three is describe the process needed to go from lake water to drinking water using the keywords to help you, which are on the right over here. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video, have a go at it, and then when you're ready, unpause. We'll see how you've done. Okay, let's have a look through question one then. So it says describe what desalination is and how seawater can be made potable using simple distillation. So the question here gives you a couple of clues. First one, it's a two-parter. You've got to say what this word desalination is and then the second part is you need to know what the word potable means. You should have realised that from the video and a simple distillation technique which accompanies it. 
So the first thing then is your definition, which is desalination, which is your removal of salt. So you would get one mark for saying removal of salt in brackets from water. The key thing they're looking for is that removal of salt there. The second mark is onto this potable. So what is that technique? And the first thing is, well, it's simple distillation. So what you have to do is evaporate the water, the salt water. So that's either heating or evaporating will get you the second mark there. And then the third mark of three is once you've evaporated it, the salt's been left behind, what do you get? The pure water, how do you get it? Condensing it. So the evaporator is collected and condensed. Usually the marks would be one mark for desalination, one mark for heated or evaporated, and then one mark for condensed. Some mark schemes may give you a mark for the water is collected, which could be in the form of a suitable diagram. The second question, which is explain why distilled water is used in chemical analysis. The incorrect results may be obtained is the key thing here. So the reason that we want to have chemical analysis, we want to have distilled water, is to remove any anomalies. And then the second mark is you might get precipitates formed if you do have impure water. Question three then, describe the process needed to go from lake water to drinking water. Use a diagram handout to help you. So this is the diagram here. Your first one is your sedimentation. So it's remembering that key word, which again is down here, which means the small particles are left to settle at the bottom. So giving you a description of that also gives you a mark. Step two, filtration, which is what's happening here. You've got your beds of sand and gravel, and they're used to filter out the rest of the pieces. And then your final step is your chlorination. So again, another key word, and that's telling you that the chlorine kills the microorganisms. So there are four marks there. For just remembering the three key words, you get three out of four, and then describing one of them gets you the other. My recommendation would be to put the key words in and the description, just in case the examiners change what they're looking for. Okay, hopefully that's helped you on that video. What I'd like you to have a go at now is the review section. And the question is, compare the different ways of purifying water, explaining the benefits of each and what they are used to purify. So what you're looking at there is to compare the two ones with your desalination and then your one with your sedimentation, your chlorination and your filtration. And that ends this video.